Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to be doing counting cards. This might be a bit more challenging than some of the past ones. Uh, in the casino game, Blackjack, a player can gain an advantage over the house by keeping track of the relative number of high and low cards remaining in the deck. This is called, called card counting. Having more high cards remaining in the deck favors the player. Each card is assigned a value according to the table below. When the count is positive, the player should bet high. When the count is zero or negative, the player should bet low. <clears throat> um, you will write a card counting function. It will receive a card parameter, which can be a number or a string, and increment or decrement the global count variable according to the values, according to the card's value. See table. This is the card value or the table. The function will then return a string with the current number and a string bet if the count is positive or hold if the or if the count is zero or negative. The current count on the player's decision, bet or hold, should be separate, separated by a single space. Example, negative three hold or five bet. Hint, do not reset count to zero when the value is seven, eight, or nine. Do not return an array. Do not include quotes, string, or double in the output. So if the card sequence is two, three, four, five, six, we would return five bet. Cool. This is actually pretty, uh, this is actually, we're writing an algorithm that makes sense. Interesting. So here, let's see, we're writing a function called CC, which is a terrible name for a function, but that doesn't, well, we can talk about that later. CC2, so CC3. So it's like we're getting delta two. What this is trying to say is like, you're getting delta two. So in your head, a two counts for one. So therefore, your original count is zero, and so now your new count is equal to uh, one. And then three, seven, that makes it plus one, plus one, so then it's three here, and then the king means negative one. So uh, if you were to take one from three, you get two, and then an ace is equal to minus one. So if you, with the ace, you would have, this, this would result in a value of two bet, of one bet one space bet. Um, cool. Wow. This is going to be interesting. So let's see okay, about this. If the card sequence of two, three, four, five, six should return bet five. So let's just write that down. Hmm. Let's write a switch statement, which asks, which takes in a card as a parameter. And then we're going to say in the case that the card is a uh, Two, yeah, we can do it like this. Two, three, four, five, or six. <clears throat> if that's the case, then we want the count to be <clears throat> added to with one, and then we want to break. So in the case of a card being two, it would add the count to one, so it would go from zero to one, and then we break out of there. Um, in the next example, well, seven, eight, nine, we actually don't want anything to happen, so we don't even need to mess with the count um, unless you wanted to. You could just go, but no. Well, it might, it might make it more verbose, maybe, maybe a little bit. Um, so you could go uh, with the case of seven, eight, and nine. You can just add break, or you could even go count plus equals zero because you don't want anything to actually happen. And then the finally we want if the cases were equal to 10, uh, the string of J, the string of queen, the string of king, and then the string of A, we could do the count is minus equal to one. And then we can break. We don't need to break, but I'll just do it there. Um, yeah, and so then what do we need? If we return the count here, um, now what we're going to want to do is return the total value. Hmm, interesting, yeah. It'll be, yeah. We'll return the count 
Let's do uh, interpolation. So I'm going to add a string in here. I'm going to actually add it with these high braces, the ones that are right underneath the exit key. And then uh, I think it's a money sign. Yeah, with the money sign, we'll do the count with a space. And then we're going to need something else, maybe action. Uh, action. And now we should get a function. Oops, I need the money sign here. Action. So what have I, what have I done here? I've added the count to the feedback, and then I've entered the action to the feedback. So we don't have anything right now for action. So if I go, I want the action to be equal to a variable is equal to a variable of action is equal to an empty string. And then we can say, um, if the count is greater than zero, we can say the action becomes equal to Hold if the count is zero or negative. If it's greater than zero, that means not equal to zero. So we can say this is equal to bet. And then else, we want to say the action is equal to hold. And um, so here we're going to add in the count, which will be whatever it is. And then the action will be equal to either bet or hold, depending upon what happens in the count here. And uh, if we run the tests, I don't know, maybe it'll pass. Yeah, this one's actually pretty challenging because I'm not sure that this would actually work in practice because the count is a global variable. And if you were to just run two, three, five, seven, would it actually decrement? Let's see, if we were to go console.log cc2, what do you think comes out? Bet. So it's just running through here, it's saying one bet. But what happens if we did it again? with an ace, would it say hold? Would say zero hold. So it's not actually having a, yeah, this is a little confusing because this is actually not going to work in real life because you can't feed this. It needs to have some sort of different scope for the count. But you know, that's kind of outside the scope of here. Basically, I'm just teaching you, I wanted to, they're trying to just show you that you can Create a case situation with defaults like we've been doing in the past, and then you can create an if statement based upon that count, and uh, you can either say bet or hold. And then so in the end, we're going to have a string that's going to be like the count with plus a space, and then, then it's going to have hold. If you're having a real big challenge with this, there's a possibility that you're just mix, missing a space. Um, maybe you haven't set it up so that the bet action's in there because they're actually looking for a string that has a format like this, which is an integer to string, and then this is a space, and then hold. Another way you could write this is you could say count uh, to string uh, plus a space and plus the action. The action's already being set as a string, so that shouldn't be a problem. And my guess is if we were to run the tests, this would pass as well. And so it's important to remember the string. And then if you have an integer, you have to change it into a string beforehand. And because I set the action as, uh, as strings, that just works the way that it is. But yeah, this is a bit of a tricky one, but um, I hope this tutorial helped you. If you have any questions about this, please let me know. And uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.